The orchard is sort of quite a complex environment. Um, when we uh, were originally looking for a piece of land, we were really only after an acre, um, but we never saw any uh, suitable bits of land. And uh, eventually, um, a plot of land uh, that was nine acres came on the market, and this was just after the property crash. And um, so we ended up buying nine acres, and uh, that was more than we um, ever had any plans to plant up or ever could plant up with apples. So we've done a lot of different and interesting things with it. And this is a little section of the orchard environment which we're, we're quite pleased with and it's getting better all the time. Uh, these are uh, going to be in blossom soon. These are our Espalier pears. And these um, form a, a boundary. We actually did quite well with them last year. I, I did a video um, comparing and contrast how much um, uh, fruit we got off of one of these espalier pears, uh, Burr Hardy variety, compared with how much um, we got off uh, um, a, a, a freestanding pyramid uh, to a tall, large pear uh, of, of the same, of the very same variety. I did a little bit of pruning on here. I haven't quite caught up with myself. Never quite do. Uh, never quite get it all done. Uh, but anyhow, um, I'll come up a little bit more later. Uh, and, and I showed in that video that, that we uh, had the same weight of pears off of one of the Cispalias, but the average size was much better. Just how we've got the uh, damsons that are just about to come into blossom. A few of them are just out in blossom. And this is the last Saturday of uh, you know, old Baden Powell author of Scouting for Boys, commended bees as an example uh, for us to emulate in terms of their behaviour. But anyway, um, yeah, so this is, um, this is actually producing a serious, this does produce a serious amount of fruit, but it's mainly um, for beauty. You can see that it's in a, a line, a very linear space there, no more than a foot wide. Um, but it's actually a visual barrier, that was a thing of beauty. It's a visual barrier between the um, uh, the orchard, uh, the, the, the orchard, this particular section of the orchard where we've got a few plums here. Behind me we've got a, a few plums. We're having some problems with plums, I'll talk about later maybe. Um, and here is our vegetable area. And as is widely known throughout the world, it's the women that do most of the real agricultural work. And here's Julia um, uh, sprinkling some pelleted chicken manure, I think. Right, yes. Oh, aren't you afraid of getting your hands dirty, your delicate little hands? I will wash them afterwards. <laughs> this is um, poultry manure and it's been dried yeah. and heat treated, so there's no pathogens in it. Yeah. Um, it's a bit smelly. I'm yeah. putting it as a top dressing on the overwintered vegetables. Overwintered vegetables? Because mm. I know there are. In November. Yeah, there's a few people out there who, who are getting into growing vegetables. Um, you know, uh, we discuss the whole question of survivalism and stuff, and there's a lot of people out there who are. They're preparing their weapons to uh, keep themselves and their families alive after what's described as the SHTF and the WORL. Um, but of course, uh, regardless of uh, what's going to happen with those terrible events, if and when, whatever, um, we will still have to feed ourselves, won't we, after the uh, factory farms are no longer yeah. able to de depend on um, vast amounts of oil and then we can no longer import our food cheaply from overseas. And overwintering vegetables, of course, are really great, because um, I mean, John Seymour, I mentioned his one wonderful book, John and Sally Seymour, their book, um, Practical Self-Sufficiency. They're always very keen on seeing if you can find ways of getting two crops out of the ground in a year. So these are broad beans, and these went in to the, uh, into the, when were they planted? November. November. And when will they be harvested? They'll be harvested about the end of May. Okay. And then so I can get another crop in that ground. Another crop in the ground. And I won't dig it over completely. I'll just take the corn off the top leaf yeah. that's in because that will have the yeah. nitrogen fixing bacteria yeah. working in the soil. And then I can put in something like um, a later crop of new potatoes yeah. or leeks or something. Well, you like can put potatoes in, so in the end of May, beginning of June, and hope yeah, to get a you, crop that year. Yeah, if you put in some later, some, some new potatoes later, then you get some more new potatoes later on in the year. You could put main crops in, but they wouldn't have a lot of time. Are, are there any other... Of them, cabbages, the cabbage family follow very yeah. well on with this because the nitrogen from the beans helps the cabbages and the ground is nice and clean yeah. because it's been kept clean for the right. beans. So we always follow the crops with something different yeah. family. And these are 
onions, I believe, here. These, these are the onions. These are onions. From, yeah. yeah. From sets, overwinter onion sets. These yeah. bunchy ones are the overwinter shallots. Which is a new variety. It's like a trying. group of onions. It's like a kind of onion, okay. but they. Uh, um, so these are shallots. Those are onions. Those ones are overwintered onions from seed. Right. Some of them are doing well, they're a bit, bit patchy. We had a very hard spell of weather in December with frost and snow on them. And these are onions uh, which have been in the ground over the winter. And those are down there. And these are garlic. That's and garlic. I'm beginning to dig now, I'll put in my springstone onion set in the areas yeah. over there. So it's now late March. So this garlic went into the ground when? Octo end of October. Right. We use a lot of garlic, don't we? We haven't bought any for years. So we grow our own and we keep back the best and then we plant that to... Uh, well, uh, we get relatively mild winters and we've got a very usually, nice yeah. free draining soil. I mean, yeah. friends of ours living nearby with the same climate can't grow over winter vegetables because they're growing on clay. Yeah. So it's waterlogged all winter and everything rots off. Yeah, so, so we, wherever you live in the world, the um, you've got to uh, check out local knowledge. Um, Bearing in mind that sometimes um, people think they know something, but they haven't actually tried uh, alternatives. Um, but we, so we're hoping with some of this ground to get two crops out of it. I mean, these, this garlic, for example, this will be raised midsummer. And what we'll try and get is maybe get some French dwarf French oh, no, beans in I after this. In the in the onion area, as yeah. I harvest the early shallots and the garlic, yeah. I then sow rows of carrots because the yeah. carrots and onions are quite good together. Yeah. Um, and carrots will do for quite a late sowing, and then you can still be eating your carrots now yeah. from those late sowings. Well, of course, we've done marvellously well with carrots, haven't we? Um, I mean, yesterday I made a short video which I didn't actually put up, but uh, uh, here's our carrots, and we are. So, is this the late, you know, seeing is believing is the evidence for you? Um, we're still. Uh, using them. Um, well, they're not perfect, perhaps, but then again, you know, the cost of perfection sometimes is very high. And uh, they're going to taste pretty good. So, carrots, yeah. Um, so, we've had carrots in the ground over winter. So, just a, yeah, again, a short little sort of video here looking at um, um, overwintering. I know you know, this, this uh, channel really mainly is about uh, growing fruit. Uh, but it all, it's all um, one in the end, and uh, carrots that we've found to be a particularly useful thing. Uh, leeks again, these are an onion tribe sort of thing, and these can stay in the ground over the winter. So, yeah, so this is our vegetable patch, and um, uh, it's got the added benefit of having the uh, having a row of espalier pears which form a visual uh, demarcation. Well done Julia, I'll better go and do some more work.